This video is part one of a short mini series I'm doing about the research I did during my uh, undergrad uh, summer project in 2018. So this resulted in uh, the publication of a paper uh, on the mean order of connected induced subgraphs of block graphs. Okay, so if you don't understand all the words in that big mouthful, do not worry, the whole point of this video is precisely to explain uh, what the title means and the central ideas uh, contained within this paper. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this paper now is because I just wrote an article for this awesome blog called Underrad. So they have, uh, it's a blog where people uh, write articles about the research that they've done. As you can see, there's physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, and there's uh, just already a wealth of, of great articles in here that I'd highly recommend checking out. So I figured I'd make a video uh, to go along uh, with and complement the article that I wrote. And uh, we, so the, the first thing to discuss is graph theory, because this is a result belonging to the field of graph theory. Uh, so in this video, we're just going to define the key concepts uh, therein. And if you did, uh, if you're already familiar with graph theory, you might just want to skip on to the next video. Uh, but this will be a good refresher for some of the terminology we're going to use later on. So graph theory is a field that uh, the famous mathematician Paul Erdős did a lot of work in. Uh, in some sense, it can be viewed as a, a smaller part of the larger field of combinatorics. And uh, speaking of Erdős, I actually, uh, through the publication of this paper, managed to get an Erdős number of two, which is the highest Erdős number possible. And uh, being as my, well, Erdős is now passed, and my supervisor had an Erdős number of one, having wrote some papers with him. Uh, if you don't know what that means, I'll leave a link in the description to a number file video uh, talking about the Erdős number. But right now, uh, we want to know uh, what is a graph in the field of graph theory. So first off, what a graph is not, it is not the bar graphs you drew in high school, nor is it uh, pie charts that you... Uh, might have fallen asleep to if you've been in a business meeting. Uh, and it's also not, uh, you know, the graph of the you know, plummeting stock markets. Uh, a graph is basically a game of connect the dots. So a graph is typically described by drawing what are called uh, vertices and uh, things that are called edges between them. So this would be an example of a graph. And I can even label the vertices, maybe one, two, three, and four. Uh, as a second example of a graph, uh, the idea is uh, what's important here is the relations between vertices and edges. So it's not so much the length of vertices that matter, but it is the uh, simply which vertices are connected to which other vertices. So it's actually going to turn out that these two graphs are secretly the same graph. Even though they look like they've been drawn quite differently, uh, the idea is that if you matched up uh, vertex 1 with vertex A, vertex 2 to vertex B, uh, 3 to C, and 4 to D, uh, you would find that uh, the adjacency relations, that is, which vertices are connected by which edges, uh, line up perfectly uh, with the first graph labeled by numbers. So that's kind of vague, and I am going to give a precise uh, definition of what it means for two graphs to be the same. Uh, but first, we need a precise definition of graph. So a graph G, we'll often denote it with a G, it's quite apropos. And uh, this is really consists of the data of two sets. So one is a set of vertices, and the other is a set of edges. Uh, but the set of edges is going to be constructed out of uh, what are called unordered pairs. So this means things like uh, 
an element one, two, this should mean the same element as two, one, one. So for example, in our graph, we have an edge between vertices one and two, and we don't really care about the direction of this edge. It's not going from one to two or two to one. Those mean the same thing. Now, there is a notion of directed graph in graph theory, uh, but that's not going to be useful for us here. So for example, uh, in the first graph we wrote down, its vertex set would be the set one, two, three, four. It's just a collection of the labels of vertices. And its edge set would be the unordered pairs, one, two, two, three, three, four, and two, four. Now there's a couple things to notice here. So first off, uh, the vertex set, since it's a set, there are no duplicated elements. So we don't ever write a vertex with the same label down twice. Uh, similarly, uh, the edge set is a set. So we're never going to have multiple edges. There can only be one copy of each element. Again, there does exist a notion of multigraph in graph theory in which multiple edges are allowed, but we're not going to be interested in this case. We're just looking at the basic structure of graphs. Uh, there's also one uh, extra thing I want to throw out here, and that is I don't want there to be uh, what are so-called loops. So I don't want to have a vertex which has an edge uh, whose both the endpoints are that same vertex. So this is called a loop and I want to toss out this loop as well. So in order to do this, there is some terminology. We say a graph is simple if there are no multiple edges and if there are no loops. So for the rest of this video, if I say graph, I really mean a simple graph. That's just going to be uh, implicit in what I'm saying. Okay, now I told you that the graph, uh, which is we labeled with numbers, is secretly the same as the graph, which is labeled with letters. So we really want to uh, try and pin down, well, what we mean by this. Because certainly the vertex sets are not equal. Uh, so what should it mean for two graphs to secretly be the same? Remember, um, I said that the key is it's the adjacency relations. So what that means uh, is uh, if we have two vertices belonging to some graph, uh, we say they're adjacent uh, if they have an edge between them and we'll sometimes write this little twiddle. So u twiddle v means they're adjacent. So in our graph labeled with numbers, I would write one twiddle two because they're adjacent. And I could also write one twiddle with a slash through it, three to say, well, one is not adjacent to three. And sure enough, you can see there's no edge going between uh, vertex one and vertex three in this case. Okay, so in order for two graphs to be the same, it would make sense uh, that for starters, they should have the same number of vertices. That seems like a pretty clear difference between two graphs. So for example, uh, this graph I drew, uh, even if we had forgotten about the loop, it has three vertices. And so we really shouldn't uh, even bother trying to ask whether this is the same as either of the two other graphs drawn. So one way that in mathematics we can describe whether two collections or not have the same number of elements is that of a bijection. So two sets uh, really have the same number of elements if and only if one can find a bijection between those sets. So uh, two graphs, G and H, uh, in order to say that they're secretly the same graph, uh, condition one, we should demand that there is a bijection between those vertex sets. And since adjacency is the essential underlying feature of a graph, we should also demand that somehow the adjacency relation is preserved. So we should furthermore demand that for all pairs of vertices, U and V, in the vertex set of G, uh, if it is the case that U is adjacent to V, then in the image under F, both of those vertices should still remain adjacent. 
So here's an example of a function uh, going between the two sets, uh, which has this property. So I could send f of one to a, uh, I could send the vertex two to b, I could send the vertex three to d, and I could send the vertex four to c. And now it's just a matter of looking at both of these pictures and convincing yourself that uh, yes, this function in fact uh, preserves adjacency. So if any of the two numerically labeled vertices are adjacent, you'll find that their images uh, in the uh, in the second graph labeled by letters uh, do hold still. And of course, uh, it's quite clear to see that this function is a bijection. So these graphs are secretly the same. They represent the same structure. When this happens, uh, we say that the graphs are isomorphic and we call F an isomorphism. Now, oftentimes in mathematics, whenever we come up with a structure, the, we also typically have a notion of a substructure that is some smaller co collection which also shares the features of that structure. So for example, there's subspaces of vector spaces, there's subspaces of topological spaces, there's submanifolds of manifolds, etc, etc. So we also have a notion of subgraphs of a graph. That is uh, a graph h is said to be a subgraph of a graph g and i like to use the notation it's like a subset symbol except we make it sort of square and blocky uh, this is i don't think this is commonplace at all this is something i just use in my own personal notes and i always write this to mean sub structure so uh it's you know, it's more blocky. So it's like a more rigid version of subset. So not only is there some containment uh, going on, but uh, I always write this. So if I am in any context, say there's vector spaces or algebraic varieties or something, I always use uh, this uh, chunky subset notation to mean substructure. So in this case, it'll mean subgraph. Uh, so it's a subgraph if the vertex set of H is a subset of the vertex set of G, and if the edge set of H is a subset of the edge set of G. Of course, the condition is also that H is itself a bona fide graph, so we're not allowing to just have, say, an edge sticking off from a vertex with no other vertex on the end of it. So if we look at some examples, well, if we just took the vertices one and two and the edge connecting them, uh, in our graph, then we can see that this in itself satisfies the conditions to be a graph. Uh, its vertex set would just be the set containing one, two, and its edge set would just be the set containing the edge, one, two. And it can be realized as a substructure of uh, the original graph, G. I could also form a subgraph by taking uh, the subset of all vertices, but what if I just wrote in the edges one, two, and three, four? Now, according to the definition of subgraph that I've written above, this is a bona fide graph. Uh, it's, it's, we have a set of vertices, we have a set of unordered pairs describing the edges, uh, and these are both subsets of the original graph. However, something weird happens here and we get this sort of disconnected picture. There's these two distinct pieces of the graph. And so this is kind of a redundant sort of silly thing because uh, really we could just treat each of these graphs as separate uh, entities and study the properties of the separate graphs instead of studying the whole uh, thing together. We may as well treat them as separate. So we want to avoid this situation and we only want to deal with what are called connected graphs. To make this idea more precise, uh, we're going to first define the notion of a path in a graph. So if I have a sequence of vertices, u1 up to ur, such that uh, all of these vertices are distinct, so ui is not equal to uj, for i 
not equal to j. And I require that ui is adjacent to ui plus 1 for all i, which is at least 1, and at most r minus 1. Uh, then this is called a path uh, belonging to the graph. So for example, uh, the vertex 1, the vertex 2, and the vertex 4. Uh, we can see that 1 is uh, adjacent to 2, 2 is adjacent to 4, so this would be our, our u1, u2, and our u3. Uh, and uh, there's also no repetitions, right? We never get the same vertex twice. So this is an example of a path. And this is, of course, aptly named because it tells you uh, whatever two vertices are at the endpoints of a path, that means you can get from one vertex to the other uh, by a series of simply hopping over one vertex at a time. So one way to express the notion of uh, connectedness is we say that a graph is connected uh, if for any two of its vertices, we can always find a path between them where the first vertex in the path is u and the last vertex in the path is v. So uh, in our example, in our original example, we can see that this graph is indeed connected. Pick any two vertices, you should be able to find a path between them. Uh, meanwhile, in this uh, strange disconnected subgraph, we wrote down, it's clear that there's no way to say get from the vertex 2 over to the vertex 3. There's simply no edges allowing you to do this. Now the final property I'd now the final property I'd like to discuss in this is a stronger notion of subgraph, sort of a, a beefed up subgraph. So we've already prevented a certain kind of weird subgraph from happening by uh, introducing this term connected and demanding that we look at connected subgraphs. But let's also look at the case where I have these highlighted vertices 1, 2, uh, 4. But what if we considered the subgraph 2 and 4, 3? Now, once again, this is certainly a bona fide graph. Its vertex set is 2, 3, 4. Its edge set is 2, 4, and 4, 3. So certainly this thing forms a graph. And we can see quite clearly it is a substructure of the original graph we wrote down. So this is a subgraph. However, we are missing one of the edges. That is the edge going between 2 and 3. Now, there's nothing forbidding this in the definition of subgraph. But we do want to capture this sort of stronger notion of inheritance. So though that is, uh, we want to always have uh, any of the edges that should be there uh, will be there. So to be precise about this, it, we're going to say that a subgraph is induced if for any pair of vertices in our subgraph H, uh, if it is the case that uh, the edge uv happens to belong to the edge set of g, that is, it is an edge in the parent graph, then we're going to demand that uv be an edge in the subgraph. So our example down below of 2, 3, and 4 uh, without the edge 2, 3, this is an example of a subgraph which is not induced. However, if we were to add the edge in, uh, the edge 2, 3 in, now we would have an induced subgraph because all the edges that should be there are there. So that's going to wrap it up for this super brief introduction to graph theory. In the next video, we're going to get into more detail about what the mean connect and do subgraph order is and start getting into the nitty gritty of what we actually worked on in my undergrad research project.